flying off the ceiling, taken by this feeling. Baby, we're invincible. Hi guys, and welcome back to another episode of Rebuilding Knott's County. As always, if you are enjoying the series, do be sure to drop a like, that would be awesome. Starting today on the page of Tyrese Palmer, uh, because he's been performing well, and I'm kind of using the progress bar on the dev center and what my scouts are suggesting, not my scouts, my coaches, to sort of realize who we should be profiling in these. Now, obviously it's still one star, but there's progress being made, and the guy's doing well in training, so I figured it was only fair that we highlight him. And this makes him a bit pointless at the moment although i still think it's important but once it comes down the line where we've got a load a load a load and believing there will be a load of young regens in our youth academy and whatnot coming forward this is going to be a very very important segment i think this is the best time for it so this is tyrese palmer he's doing an, a decent job so far four goals and one assist in the non-competitive i don't know if that i think that should count the under 19 uh, under 18 games that we play so i think he's doing all right so far a reasonable goal return for him so far a couple of penalties in there too he's doing okay decent finishing but his composure somewhat lacking like his actual pure Pure striker stats, dribbling, finishing, first touch. Pretty damn solid, and he's a naturally fit player. But I just don't know if he's quite going to have the uh, the ceiling that we might like. I supported Chelsea because my mum liked Jose Mourinho. See, this brought up an interesting one, and this brought me into today's question of the day. By the way, if you've got any ideas for a question today, drop those in the comments as well, and I'll be sure to pick some of those up. I uh, just put hashtag QOTD so I can find them. Bringing it back because you guys seem to like it. But this brings to me to my question of the day. Which footballer did your mum have a crush on? Because this comment basically brought up the fact that my mum used to really like Dimitar Berbatov, which of course meant my dad said he was a smarmy git. So there you go. Um, <laughs> that's the way that one worked. Who, which football did your mum or dad, hey, who knows, uh, have a crush on? Let me know in the comments. Matt beats Stockport. Scott Duxbury brass music stops. Oh, poor old Scotty D. I don't know, is he actually still at Stockport as well, by the way? Because, <laughs> uh, yeah, we, we didn't exactly do them any favours in that game, really, did we? But, yeah, the brass band music will play on somewhere in the northeast. Northwest. Northwest. And just a quick thing to mention, some of you brought up the fact I wasn't wearing the pimp suit in the transfer episode. There is a reason for that. The pimp suit was a Stockport-only thing. I tend to have a different transfer episode costume per save now. That just seems to be a thing that's happened. Because we had the uh, transfer dredge, I think it was, with Polonia. So, I'm throwing it out there. Drop me some ideas in the comments for what the transfer window episode costume should be this year. Um, I, I, I have more like fancy dress than a normal man should have, let's put it that way. So, we've been ploughing away in the off-camera games, but I figured we could do a nice double live come today. Because we've got an FA Cup tie, and that tie is against Kingsland Town. So, they're a National League North side, uh, which is weird, because I always consider Kingsland to be fairly far south. Like, I've only ever been there once. I played a gig there about... Uh, seven, eight years ago, and the road getting there on the A10 was a nightmare because of all the bloody roundabouts, so it took us an inordinate amount of time to get there from Cambridge. So, yeah, that's all I know about Kings Lynn. Off the back of that good win against Wrexham, we had a 1-0 victory at home to Eastie. This might look fairly comfortable, but honestly, it, it wasn't. We, we really did struggle in this game. Like We had shots, as you can see, but the chances just weren't really there for us. Brindley eventually set up Wes Thomas with a lovely ball in. Wes Thomas won a fantastic header, but that ended up being the winner. A Muscat went off injured in this game after McCrory had gone off injured. So we finished the final 10 minutes with 10 men. Joe Muscat damaged cruciate ligaments nine months. That's the rest of the season he's gone and that could really really hamper his performance uh, his like career with us and that's such a shame because a lot of you guys told me he was going to be a fantastic player and i really don't know if that might be the end of his career for Notts county because of the way things are gonna go in the meantime such a shame but we got away with it a bit against eastley but then got back to winning ways with a 4-0 trashing away at ninth place Yeovil. This is a bit more like it. Doyle gave us a lead from the penalty spot before Wes Thomas scored an absolutely beautiful goal. Uh, then added another one through Enzo Baldivine in the second half. Damian McCrory, of all people, scoring his first goal for the club. Brindley was sensational. 4-0 victory. We're actually not even conceding goals in these games at the moment, which is delightful. But then, unfortunately, we put in a really poor performance against Chorley. You might look at that again and say, hey, you were right, we weren't. Um... We were very, very fortunate to take the lead. Like, it was still a good goal. Uh, Bars just whipped one across, and there was Boldvine. He sort of peeled back and took himself inside and was able to just slam it home first time to make it 1-0 in the 88th minute. But then they got a thoroughly deserved equaliser in the 89th minute. Frustrating, though, Slocum had saved three one-on-ones in this game off of, uh, I think it was, um, I think it was Thorn. Yeah, it must have been Thorn. And we were so lucky not to be 2 3 nil down at that point. Unfortunately, there was a defensive error at the back, I think from Ben Turner, that gave the ball away to Jack Baxter, uh, or someone else. And the ball didn't deflect it into Jack Baxter's path, rather, and he was able to slam it home. Shame for Sam Slocum, because he would have been man of the match otherwise, but Chorley definitely deserved the point out of that game, no question. But it still leaves us seven points clear at the top of the league, which is the main thing right now. Like The way I'm looking at it currently is that it's not just a case of we 
you know, Harrogate have to somehow get eight more points over the rest of the season than we do. And that's going to be a really, really difficult task for them uh, if we keep on plowing away. 14 games unbeaten. Boldervine is the top scorer in the league with 11 goals. Wes Thomas has 10. But they're not exactly running away with it because Josh Umara, who scored twice against us, is still right in there. Booty with his seven assists. Boldervine, Booty and Thomas doing fantastic stuff. Sam Slocum with his seven clean sheets too. I think he might be able to win that this year too. But, you know, there's still signs of a little wobble. We didn't look great against Eastleigh and got the win. We certainly weren't great against Chorley. And if anything, we were lucky to get a point from that game. So I do think that defeat is going to come soon. And I kind of just want to get it out of the way. One thing that is a bit like this has to be looked at. I'm sorry. I don't care. Like this has to be looked at. We are top of the league, have won 12 out of 14 games and the board are C minus on our match performance. Let's just take a look at this in a bit more detail. So a one all draw at home to Chesterfield, who are fourth in the league, is an F. What? Like, that's the only A-plus we've ever had in this save. Look, 4-0, B-minus, 3-2 victory away at second place Harrogate Town. Is a C-plus? What? Um, the board have got unrealistic expectations, and I think this really does need... Disappointed with the results getting on the pitch. I'm sorry, that is not... That cannot be right. Um, they definitely need to have a look at that, because th this is so harsh, the way they're judging you. Okay, enough of that rant. Let's get into the game against Kingsland Town. Anyway... Oh, we get seven subs for this game. That's going to be interesting. Um, I've actually started doing this thing where you can make that like that. So I can actually see the progress and player status. Is a little bit, just give myself a little bit more information. So that's kind of what we're going to do for today. I'm happy to go with the same starting 11 today. Matt O'Reilly's put in a couple of poorer performances lately. And I do wonder if that's because he's playing in that box-to-box -box role. But I just feel like he's done a better job there than Mitch Rose has when he's played. If you look at Mitch Rose, his actual... Where is he? He's on the bench, isn't he? Yeah. His overall ratings this year just haven't really been amazing. 6.86. Just going to pick the bench like this so we can see who maybe is deserving of a place on the bench so perhaps someone like Declan Dunn can go on the bench because he's just got that slightly upward one and maybe there'll be a chance for him you know because you can see an 8.15 is a good sign for me he's putting in solid performances in training unlike Nathan Tyson who I don't know I think he just sits around at training eating bacon butties at this point I'm actually going to start this one on attacking because I feel like we kind of need to so let's go Notts County Kingsland Town let's go and grab ourselves a place in the FA Cup first round Booty with the free kick. He might go for goal. You know, he hasn't. Oh, oh my God. Well, brilliant header from Oliver has hit the, hit the woodwork. All in all, though, a very positive start. They're conceding a lot of free kicks to us, though, which is, oh, great strike from Milne Bars. Charlie Oliver's header is the one that actually does it. But the key thing is they're committing too many fouls. We're winning free kicks and Booty is delivering some absolutely bootylicious balls in. Charlie Oliver this time with the header. I think that actually is an assist rather than a shot. That is great work. And Milne Bars with the goal, 1-0. Beautiful. Thomas is peeled very wide here. Goes for Booty's in. Oh, lovely goal. There you go. The first one that you guys have actually seen in a live com game. Regan Booty makes it. Notts County 2. Kings Town 0. That's a very good start to the match. 2-0 uh, up inside 20 minutes. Comfortable. Booty does well here. Just drops it off for Thomas. I don't know why he was so wide, but it just allowed space for Booty to just drive inside. But this is a very comfortable finish from the lad. Lovely stuff. Second goal of the year for him. Lovely. Well, we kind of went off the boil after that. We've got a 2-0 lead. We're controlling the match from start to finish so far, but... I might just put it back to positive and rest on the ball for the rest of the game, really, because I just don't want to get any injuries. Oh, I for Brinley again. You need a good delivery instead of just a shot. And he might actually get... No. They've given a penalty for that. Ah, he's not going to let me choose who's taking it anyway, so... It's going to be Mitch Rose, I guess. Looked a bit soft to me, but if Rosie scores this one, then that will really wrap things up for us. And he's a lovely finish from the bottom corner for Mitch Rose. He is a very good penalty taker. I will certainly give him that. I think three of his four goals have been from the spot. Not three. Uh, Kings in town, nil. Great finish. Comfortable. Mm. Chance for a delivery here. You can see what I mean? They cluster at the back post and we always end up with this odd number of players, even though they're set to man mark. Like, what? Are, who are you man marking exactly? Um, and you end up with this overload at the back post. Well, that was about as straightforward as they come, but that's all we wanted, really. A straightforward victory through to the first round of the FA Cup. Interesting to see who we get in that draw. That's going to be really, really important. You might actually get a chance to see that, depending on how things go when the draw actually is. 3-0. Lovely old job. Right. FA Cup first round draw. A lot of teams left in it. Um, just give me something. Oxford United of League One. See, this is what I mean. Like, that's going to be... We're not... How are we going to get to the second... We're going to have to knock out a side who's two divisions above us in order to actually complete the objective of getting there. That is a bit unfortunate, considering there was a lot of teams we could have got there, and Oxford United is not one of the ones I would have picked. I really hope the board have some kind of common sense if we were to go out to a League One side, but we will see. Right, we're back. Probably away today. Should be winnable, obviously, but remains to be seen. So in theory, we can just go with the exact same lineup as the last game because we've had a nice week off. What I'm going to do, though, is for today, I'm going to bring out 
uh, Matt O'Reilly and get Mitch Rose back in to start because I want to have to. I'm going to swap around O'Reilly and Booty for the next game because it's really close by, and I don't want to make. I don't want either of those two to get injured. Plus, injured. Plus, Matt O'Reilly just. I don't know. He's been off the pace a little bit in the last few matches. I want to give Mitch Rose another chance. As for the bench, however, though, um, I do want to make sure that we. Obviously not got a goalkeeper there. I'm going to put Owen Betts on the bench because he's actually training really well uh, and he's a centre-back so we can fit him in. Pierce Bird has only just come back from international duty, I think. With the under-21s, uh, under I think, for Northern Ireland. Pretty good. So a 4-4-2. Okay, that's fine. Harrogate played 4-4-2, I think, as did Ebbsfleet. And we've actually conceded goals to them, so we've got to be careful. Let's go. Let's have this. Let's add another goal. We'll see how Harrogate get on because they're really... I mean, Harrogate... Actually, in fairness, from everybody down below... It's really a match from anybody. One of those teams is surely going to start to become the main challenger to us. But they're all very close from all the way down to sixth. Uh, they've actually started fairly strongly. Cleared away. Or oh, could get a breakaway here. If Boldvine can... He's been hacked to the ground. Um, Excuse me there, referee? Boldvine was clearly hacked to the ground there. The player obviously didn't get the ball because he was nowhere near the ball. And he's just hacked him over. Well, I mean, that is an absolute robbery there. Michael Chica score for Bromley. But Boldvine was very clearly fouled in the build-up to it. Like, undeniably. Because the player was the ball wasn't even near him and he's just hacked him down. Um, okay. Taking revenge on Bromley and Michael Cheek here. Still bad defending to let Michael Cheek get in there for him. I think, yeah. Uh, okay, we've got to come from behind. All the way across from McCrory, who's really well far forward, but finds bars. Oh, good strike. Right, okay, let's get this game going. Hmm, this has all the hallmarks of an annoying defeat. But I suppose we were due one eventually. Over the top and Cheek's actually got through here. They should be able to make a tackle and they've held him up long enough. He's gone past a few more. Wow. I mean, Michael Cheek has just scored an absolutely beautiful goal, and we are 2-0 down and very much staring in the face the possibility of our first defeat in all competitions this season. I thought we'd cleared the danger. Once they got back here, I thought Cheek was done, but he gets past one, and that is an absolutely brilliant strike. Goalkeeper should be doing better with that, though. My God, what's happened? Right, long way back for us now. Uh, if we took a draw out of this game, I'd be pretty happy, quite frankly. Let's go. We've still got to score a load more goals. It's definitely possible. McCrory. Bars, he's going to shoot, of course, and Booty! And puts it in the bottom corner. Within the first 10 minutes, it's already 2-1. Regan Booty getting in there delightfully. Um, they're definitely get atable. McCrory, I thought we'd actually screwed this up here, but it's a lovely little ball inside for Millen Bars. I thought he's going to shoot, but instead just peels it back. Booty's in there. Keeper actually gets a hand to it. It's not enough. It's Bromley 2, Notts County 1. Come on. Booty to deliver one. Back post, and it's Thomas with the save. Bars. Back for Booty. He's got time to still get a ball in. He's found Oliver. Go on, has to shoot. Oh, what are you doing? Preston. Well, if we could win it off them here, which we have. Mitch Rose wins it. He's through. He's going to struggle to score from here, but he might find Booty again. Is there a moment for Regan? Steps up, and it's well saved by Haddock. Well, uh, they've had two shots on target, and they've both gone in. If there was ever a time that we were going to lose, it's probably in a game like this. But they did have another shot somewhere in there. 14 fouls in the first half. Cut out by Doyle. That's better. We're imposing ourselves on them a bit more now. Rose. Boldervine. Around the side for Brindley. Go on. Flash one across for us. It's a great tackle. And Oh, what? That's not a penalty. I'm sorry. That is not a penalty. If we score this, then it will balance out the two. Well, yeah. Okay, fair enough. Then we're even on the match. Because I don't think that... I think there was a foul in the build to their first goal. But for me, that is not a penalty. I know we can't see, but it certainly didn't look like it to me. Bromley 2. Notts County 2. Mitch Rose from the spot again. His fifth of the season. And we are level. Like, if I'm going to complain when things go against us, I've also got to point out when things go for us. Because I didn't think that was a pen. But plenty of time. It looks like they're actually coming back into the match again now. After really not doing a lot in the first half after scoring. God, look at the space for Hegarty. And Coulson! Oh my god. Every shot on target Bromley have had in this match has gone in. Um... And I don't really know. I mean, this was, again, we've been all right today, but McCrory's clearance there is poor. And then, I mean, it's still an excellent finish from Coulson. They're just, everything they're hitting is going in. I'm going to get bars. Actually, no, screw it. I'm going to get Wes Thomas off and get Stephen Walker on. Just give us something different. We're going to go very attacking. Corner kick, apparently. I mean, we've got time left, but hey, sometimes it's, you know, statistically, you're not going to be able to win every match. And O'Reilly. And, oh, bars thunders it in there. Still six minutes, but it's very unlikely that we're going to go and grab ourselves the equaliser. Um, frustrating one, it would be fair to say, on the night here. We were going to be due that first defeat of the season. Would have been nice to have it in a game where it wasn't because they scored every shot on target, but that's just how things go sometimes. Rose. And bends it to Huddart. Walker. Unless he can find a perfect ball. Ball in. Boldvine! Saved by Huddart. Well, they did actually finally have another shot on target in there somewhere. Um... I think that's just one of those things that's going to happen sometime. I still think we were really decent on the night. The way those goals went, hey, that's just one of those things sometimes. I still think we played pretty decently. And if we play this game another 10 times, we'll probably win it, nine of them. That's just one of those things that happens. We've finally lost our unbeaten run, but ah, 
I want to. I didn't want to have that hanging over us anyway. We're still six points clear at the top of the league. Still playing decent football. A frustrating one. Um, but hey, if that's what it takes to beat us, then. I'll be all right with that. We certainly weren't played off the pitch by any stretch of the imagination. They scored some really decent goals in there, and that's what it took. So I'll be all right with that. That being said, the players should still be ashamed because they should be doing a lot better than that, it would be fair to say. I think we're still in a very good position so far, and as long as we don't do that too often, we'll be all right. Well, I think it's only fair. Well, we've got a tough run coming up here. I think it's only fair to do another live con, a double live con. I want to do the Oxford game because it's there and that's so important for us. But also, Barnet away, second place in the league. So massive, massive episode next time around with Barnet and Oxford games in there. That could really be important for us, particularly with Aldershot Town in there too. Like we could start to get reeled in if we don't get the right results in there, amazingly. Anyway, if you've enjoyed this episode, and I really hope you have, drop a like, that'd be glorious. And if you're new to the channel, subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next episode for Oxford and the FA Cup, which in some ways is kind of must win. I just don't think we will and then barn it away having played older shot town away in the game before this is going to be difficult could make or break our season if we don't get the right results anyway see you guys soon thank you so much for watching